Jesus King, who has washed us in the tide, flowing from his pierced side. Praise we him whose love divine gives his sacred blood for wine, gives his body for the feast, Christ the victim, Christ the priest. Where the paschal blood is poured, death's dark angel sheathes his sword. Israel's host triumphant go through the wave that drowns the foe. Praise we Christ whose blood was shed. Paschal victim, Paschal bread, with sincerity and love, eat we manna from above. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. <laughs>
Let us pray. O oh God, who in this wonderful sacrament have left us a memorial of your passion, grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption, who lives and reigns with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. When Moses came to the people and related all the words and ordinances of the Lord, they all answered with one voice, we will do everything that the Lord has told us. Moses then wrote down all the words of the Lord and rising early the next day, he erected at the foot of the mountain an altar and 12 pillars for the 12 tribes of Israel. Then Having sent certain young men of the Israelites to offer holocausts and sacrifice young bulls as peace offerings to the Lord, Moses took half of the blood and put it in large bowls. The other half he splashed on the altar. Taking the book of the covenant, he read it aloud to the people, who answered, All that the Lord has said, we will heed and do. Then he took the blood and sprinkled it on the people, saying, this is the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you, in accordance with all these words of his, the word of the Lord. in the eyes of the Lord is the death of his faithful. Your servant am I, the son of your handmaid. You have loosened my bonds. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. A thanksgiving sacrifice I make, I will call on the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will fulfill, before all his people. I will take the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, when Christ came as high priest of the good things that have come to be, passing through the greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made by hands, that is, not belonging to this creation, he entered once for all into the sanctuary, not with the blood of goats and calves, but with his own blood, 
thus obtaining eternal redemption. For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of a heifer's ashes can sanctify those who are defiled so that their flesh is cleansed, how much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself unblemished to God, cleanse our consciences from dead works to worship the living God. For this reason, he is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. The word of the Lord. This bread will live forever. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you, carrying a jar of water follow him. Wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is uh, my guest room, where I am to eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, He took bread and said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we celebrate uh, the Feast of Corpus Christi. So the feast of the other body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the central feast uh, of the Catholic Church. But I guess, you know, something very shocking as I was preparing for this uh, little uh, meditation, reflection, that as I looked at the statistics, I looked at the stats of uh, how many people actually believe in the presence of the Holy Eucharist. And in the United States, It says 69% of Catholics don't believe in the real presence. That's pretty shocking. And uh, I remember looking at the stats, the statistics for the world as well in the past, and it wasn't wasn't much uh, better. But it kind of shows you where we're at. Uh, And I also heard statistics of uh, 
uh, during the pandemic. So during the pandemic, the statistics that went up was the statistics of uh, Netflix. So everyone was watching Netflix, but how many people were actually watching Mass? Or being part of the real presence of Jesus? So it, it is quite a shock. I remember uh, a, listening to a convert recently. So there was a person who converted from the, uh, the Protestant faith, came to the Catholic Church, and what attracted him to the, to the church, of course, uh, he received a, law, a very powerful conversion from our Lord, which happens you know, to, to certain people in history. And he said one thing you know, that he was drawn to right, a, right away was the Holy Eucharist. So he went to one of those perpetual adoration chapels where they have the uh, Blessed Sacrament uh, exposed uh, for 24 hours so 24-7, and he said as soon as he got into the chapel, this lady packed up her things and, you know, left right away. And so he said, if this is really God here, wouldn't you stay in church and never leave? And then this convert, of course, said that he used to spend 18 hours in the Adoration Chapel or even more. So he knew, you know, who God was. And we have, you know, uh, great conversion stories too. And God, from time to time, you know, he speaks to people who open their heart to him in the Holy Sacrament. Uh, Father Donald Calloway, you might know him. So he was also a, a convert. You know, he lived a very bad life. And then he became, uh, he became a Catholic priest with the, uh, the Marians, the, um, the group that's in Stock, Stockbridge. So he wrote the book of uh, Consecration to St. Joseph. And... Listen to his con conversion story sometime, uh, Father Donald Calloway. And, well, he mentions when he first came to Mass one time that he knew it was Jesus upon the altar, that as the priest raised the bread, he heard the words, you know, worship, you know, worship me. So this is, uh, this is God. So we can have problems, I guess, believing. And then, of course, the world uh, today does not help us with many distractions, many of the, the things, you know, to pull us away from the faith. And God knows this. And back in the, uh, back in the 8th century, with the earliest uh, Eucharistic miracles, so there's many Eucharistic miracles. Um, and the, the one that happened in the 8th century happened in uh, Lanciano. So it's known as the Eucharistic miracle of Lanciano. The first and the greatest uh, Eucharistic miracle in the Catholic Church. So this happened in the 8th century. There was a Basilian monk uh, who doubted. He doubted in the real presence of Christ in the Holy Eucharist. And so imagine a priest, you know, doubting in his presence. And as the priest celebrated uh, Mass, he asked our Lord, you know, help, help my unbelief. So as he held, uh, he held the host up and he said the words, you know, this is my body which will be given up for you, the flesh turned into real flesh. And then as he, uh, took, the, uh, he took the chalice and he said, uh, you know, take this all of you and drink from it. So this is uh, the cup, right, of, of the new covenant. And as he said uh, the words of consecration, uh, the, the, uh, the wine turned into real blood. So there's many uh, things, you know, which are amazing about this holy, uh, this miracle of the Eucharist. So after this, you can imagine they called the bishop, they called all the, the people to investigate these miracles as they do, you know, as they do call uh, upon the church to uh, to come and to see these miracles and to investigate them. So since uh, 1713, uh, the flesh that has been, has been kept in a, uh, in a reliquary has been uh, reserved in, an, in this artistic uh, austernarium and delicately embossed uh, by an artisan of the uh, Neapolitan school. And then the blood is also enclosed in a rich uh, and very old cup made of rocky crystal. So if you go there today, you will see this same uh, miracle. I was able to go to Lanciano uh, twice on pilgrimage, 
and I was able to see uh, the flesh and to see the, the blood, you know, which is, of course, it is dried, dried up, but you're still able to see this great miracle today. And the amazing thing, when they tested this, they said that the flesh is real flesh and the blood is real blood. And the flesh and the blood belong to the uh, human species. And as they examined it, they also saw that the flesh consists of muscular tissue from the heart. So in the flesh, we see present in sections, the my myochondrium and uh, the endocardium and the vague nerve and also the left ventricle of the heart for the large thickness of the my myocardium. So the flesh is a heart complete and it's an essential structure. And then the other amazing thing is that the flesh and the blood have the same blood type. They have the blood type AB. And this is also the same blood type that they have found in the, the famous miracle of the Shroud of Turin, so that famous uh, relic where our Lord, uh, our Lord's image is upon uh, the Holy Shroud. So in the blood, there were found the proteins in the same normal proportions as are found in the uh, in the uh, seroprotic makeup of the of the of the fresh normal blood so in the blood there were also found these uh, minerals chlorides phosphorus magnesium potassium sodium and calcium and the preservation of the flesh and the blood which were left in their natural state for 12 centuries and exposed to the action of atmospheric and biological agents remains an extraordinary phenomenon. And if you look this uh, Eucharistic miracle up, you'll see the whole uh, story. I'm just trying to give you a little image of this miracle. And someone recently, uh, a recent saint of ours, Blessed uh, Carlo Acutis, he actually put together a website where you can go and you can see all the Eucharistic miracles. So it's been updated uh, for recently. And you can go to this website and you can see all the, the Eucharistic miracles uh, in the church. And recently there was also a, a miracle in, Ar in uh, Argentina. Uh, so there's been you know, miracles also which have taken place you know, recently. So it's not only uh, in the past. And they have, uh, I believe the host over there, they have the, the priest during mass, he dropped the host, which happens sometimes. And so he took the host and put it in, in water so that the host would dissolve. And as he left it, of course, you could see that, that the flesh, you know, turned uh, to, to real flesh. And then you could see also some particles of blood upon the host. So they also had this uh, investigated. So the Lord allows uh, these miracles to happen at times so that we may come to believe, but we don't have to see in order to believe. If you read the chapter six, chapter six of St. John, which I strongly suggest you read, it tells us clearly about the Holy Eucharist. So even if uh, someone from the Protestant church comes to you, ask him to read John chapter six. And there's no way that he could deny this or he could say that it is a symbol. So, so, so the Jews on, on account argued with one another saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So this is in uh, John chapter six. So Jesus therefore said to them, amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you shall not have life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has life everlasting, and I will raise him on the last day. So I think there's nothing clearer than the words of Jesus himself when we read the Holy Scriptures. It's right there. It's uh, crystal, crystal clear as we read it from the Holy Scriptures. And, uh, and he goes on to say, For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. And of course, we always want to abide with our Lord. So of course, uh, Jesus hides himself in the species of the Eucharist, 
Uh, otherwise, we would not be able to receive the Eucharist, right? So we receive, it is Jesus who becomes truly present in the bread and in the wine, but we still see the bread as bread and we still see the wine as wine. But sometimes we have Eucharistic miracles like the one in Lanciano, which happened and you see uh, the flesh which turns into real heart tissue and the blood into real, uh, real blood as well. So as the living Father has sent me, and as I live because of the Father, so he who eats me, he also shall live because of me. This is the bread that has, has come down from heaven. Not as your fathers ate the manna and died, he who eats this bread shall live forever. These things he said when teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. And afterwards, if you read the verses afterwards, you'll see that they began to leave Jesus so they couldn't accept his teaching. As today, we see people in the world cannot accept the teaching uh, of the church that the Eucharist is really the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ himself. And so he, Jesus also turned to his apostles and said, will you also leave me? And of course, Simon Peter said, to whom shall we go? You are, uh, you are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. So may, may this also be our response uh, to our Lord today and every day. May we increase our faith and our love for our, our Lord in the most holy Eucharist, Jesus in his real presence, and Jesus uh, who gives us this food of the Eucharist, this uh, medicine of immortality, this bread that comes down from heaven, and this bread which uh, gives us all the gifts that we could ever want. And so the saints always remind us that we should always prepare ourselves for Holy Mass because, as they say, if we come unprepared and then receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, he has many gifts for us, but if we just push him aside, then how can he give us you know, those gifts that we receive when we come and receive him in this most holy sacrament? So let us ask uh, our Lord Jesus today uh, to grow in our grace, to grow in the grace and in the love of this most holy sacrament, Jesus who is present here in his body, blood, soul, and divinity, and Jesus who stays with, uh, with us in every church as we see the, the lamp here burning, whatever church we go to, and there we see the lamp, there Jesus is present. And any mass that we go to and the priest says the words of consecration, there Jesus comes upon the holy altar, and there he becomes present, and there he becomes uh, the food for all. God, you know, who is so good that he wishes to abide with us in such a close way. As we nourish our bodies, Jesus nourish us, nourishes our souls with the Holy Eucharist. He is the bread of heaven, and he wishes to abide with us always. So may we also abide with him. Let us now stand for our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. 
I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, this one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now raise our petitions to our Heavenly Father. For the Church, the mystical body of Christ, that through our ongoing conversion, its members might deepen our devotion to the Eucharistic sacrifice that gives life to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, that they might work for the protection of the most vulnerable members of our societies, especially the unborn, the elderly, the poor, and the sick. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, and for those who suffer because of armed conflict, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For husbands and wives, that their union in holy matrimony, strengthened by Christ's body and blood, might be a worthy sign of his unbreakable union with the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, and consecrated life, especially among the young people of this parish community. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Oliver Henry Johnston, who will be baptized this weekend, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our parishioners, members of our families and friends who are infirm, for the faithful departed, especially George Andovchak, who died this week, and for Mary and Patrick Fallon, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear, that you answer these prayers through the intercession of our Most Holy Mother as we pray. Hail Mary, Mary full, full of grace, grace the, the Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst, amongst women, women, and blessed, blessed is the fruit, the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, God pray, pray for us sinners, us sinners now, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. As when the shepherd calls his sheep, they Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, 
Grant your church, O Lord, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace, whose signs are to be seen in mystery, in the offerings uh, we here present through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty in our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the, as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat his flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong. And as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created, right, to give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, 
He's born with resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas More, our patron saint, and with all the saints on his constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Frank our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Jesus, my Lord, my God, my all, how can I love thee as I ought? And how revere this wondrous gift so far surpassing sacrament we thee adore oh make us love thee more and more oh make us love thee more and But Mary's sinless heart to love thee with my dearest King. Oh, with what bursts of fervent praise thy goodness, Jesus, would. I sing, sweet sacrament, we thee adore, oh, make us love thee more and more, oh, make us love thee
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray that we may delight for all eternity in that share in your divine life, which is foreshadowed in the present age by our reception of your precious body and blood, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. There are a few announcements. Religious education registration for the 2021 and 2022 program is now open via the website for all students in grades 1 to 8. St. Thomas More Parish will celebrate evening prayer on the Solemnity of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, Friday, June 11th at 7 p.m. We will pray for the repose of those who died from COVID-19 and for the consolation of their families. Please call the office or submit names online of any loved ones to be remembered. If you have yet to contribute to the 2021 Arise Annual Catholic Appeal of the Diocese of Bridgeport, please prayerfully consider the impact you will make on the people and ministries in our diocese. We hope to meet the parish goal by the end of June and encourage all who have yet to contribute to review the information in the bulletin and on the website. Please remember to take a bulletin as you leave today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Ducedo, et spes nostra salve. A te clamasus, exules vili heve, Ate suspiramus, gementes et flentes, in ag lacrimarum vale. Ia ergo, arvocata nostra, illos tuos, Misericordes oculos ad nos converte. Et 